So on today's episode, I'll be doing some studio work shooting still lives. So hi there. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in that I'm shooting indoors in my studio, which a studio goes probably isn't the greatest, but it, it works for what I'm planning on doing. And what I'm going to be doing is shooting still lifes with silk flowers. Now, if you wanted to, you could do this with real flowers, fresh cut that you get from wherever. Just keep in mind that, you know, it's a limited shelf life. Whereas these silk flowers, I can use them over and over and again in different compositions, arranged different ways. And so I just prefer to work with silk flowers. But the idea is that, you know, you set up a still life just like, you know, they did with paintings, except you're using silk flowers and you're shooting indoors. And of course, this being the beginning of December, it's kind of cold and nasty and it's been raining. And there just hasn't really been any opportunity for me to get outside and shoot anything. So I thought I'd do this. And so let's get at it. Okay, I took a couple of shots of this composition. And I can tell already that I'm not really liking it because I don't like the ivy. So I think I'm going to go back to my original and let the stem show. And then edit them out later in Photoshop and Lightroom. All right, so I've imported my images into Lightroom. And just by following my mouse, you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, these over here are, are a few that I did the other day, just when I was testing to see how this would work out. Uh, if you look at this one, this is the one with Ivy. No, that's not the one with Ivy. That's the one with Ivy. Um, I really don't like it. Um, I don't think this ivy is really, even though there's a line, sort of, if you will, running along this way, it's it's just, yeah, I just don't care for it. So I'm not even going to bother doing anything with that one. Um, what I did was I went back and shot some more, just like previously. Not a whole lot of difference, but a little. And I've done some pre-editing on this one where I've removed a lot of little spots and speckles and things like that that I knew I wasn't going to want. Um, so this one's really ready to go into Photoshop so we can get rid of these stems and shadows. So we'll just Command E, which is open in Photoshop. There it goes. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Okay, now because I've done this before, I happen to know that content aware fill in Photoshop is not going to work really well in this instance. Um, I think there's just too much contrast between just the green and the gray and the red and the gray. So it just keeps trying to pull some of the red out and some of the gray out. And so I just think it would be easier to just go ahead and do this using the clone stamp tool. Now, if you're not really familiar with it, it's really just a matter, it's, it's just a way to, if you watch, you're taking a sample there and then you're pasting it somewhere else. So, but what you want to do is get as close to the object that you're actually wanting to cover up and take your sample there. Now, right now I'm using a pretty large sample. And the reason for that is, is this is a large area. And so I can get through this rather quickly just by using large areas or large samples. And I like to resample often. 
why does it keep doing that? Of course, I may have too large of a sample. Uh, if you're not aware, the left bracket is your brush size tool or reduce brush size. Right bracket is increase. Or you can just come up here and click on brush and resize it however you want. I'm fine with what I got now. So I'm just going to take another sample. Still, that looks pretty good. And another thing to keep in mind too, when I get this back into Lightroom, I'm actually going to be softening this up a little bit. So for now, we'll just save this, which is Command S, or you can go File Save. That will save it back to Lightroom as a TIFF. All right, that's saved. We can close Photoshop. Now we're back to Lightroom. As you can see, those stems and shadows are all gone. And so as our final bit of editing, what I do want to do is I want to bring these highlights down because these white ro roses are just about blown out. So we'll bring the highlights and the whites down. So now you can start seeing some of the details in the white. Uh, I haven't done any sharpening and I'm not going to because I actually want to make this less sharp. Uh, I will add a touch of noise reduction. Chromatic aberration and profile correction. I already did that in the raw file so you don't need to do it again. Uh, I've gotten rid of all of my spots. So now let's go back up in the basics and let's see, I don't want to increase contrast. I actually want to decrease it a little bit, but not too much because I don't want to lose the, what, the detail that I gained back in the white. I don't want to lose that. I might bring this exposure down just a little bit. That looks okay. All right, normally, if I wanted an image to be sharper, I'd be increasing this texture, which is kind of a mid-level contrast. But in this case, because I want it to be softer, I'm actually going to decrease it. And if you look, this is decreased, this is increased. Oops. That's increased. That's decreased. It makes us flowers look just a little bit softer and I won't say real but less like silk flowers than silk flowers. The clarity I'm not going to do much with that because again I don't want to sharpen this very much. Dehaze is also a contrast tool but it, it also has the effect of darkening an image. I don't want to darken it too much because I don't want these grays to start overpowering the red in this vase, although I want to keep these reds muted, if you will, because I want the first thing of someone to see, I want them to see these bright red roses. 
And you can see this line that sort of goes up this way. This is a very subtle leady line. And of course there's another one across the bottom here. So you're sort of forming a triangle and the eye is drawn into that. And because there's nothing on the edges, your eye is drawn to the center. And although I see the rose first, maybe most people because this vase is so large compared to everything else, that's the first thing they're gonna see, but still, they're gonna be drawn into the photograph. All right, so the last thing I wanna do is actually, I'm going to add vignetting, which normally I don't do. But in something like this, where I want the eye to be drawn to the center, this actually helps achieve that. And it's not gonna be much, just enough to sort of darken that around the edges and bring you more into the center of the photograph. And that's really kind of it. I'm calling this one done. I'll export it, Command-Shift-E. Uh, I don't do anything other than export. You can arrange file sizes and different profiles with this, but I don't find it necessary. So if you like this video, then please click that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, then please do that. And I'll see you in the next one.